If you need some new ideas for your piano improvisation, this short series is for you. In first two videos I talked about changing octaves to improve right hand's melody, either by arpeggio or by octave jumps. Today I will focus on the left hand and what patterns you could use to make your improvisation much better. So for today's lesson, right hand will stay in one place, so you can put all your attention to the left hand. Let's start with a few simpler exercises, and then I will analyze with more details the pattern I played at the beginning of this video. Right hand will stay in this position. Today's lesson is in D major scale, and here I already have D major chord, D, F sharp and A, but in the first inversion, so F sharp, A and D. I will also use two additional notes, B and C sharp. The exercises will be focused on the left hand mostly, so with right hand I will only use these notes. Let's start with the octave jumps for the left hand. The progression will be 1, 6, 4, 5, which means I will start with the first step of D major scale, so D, then step number 6, B, then 4, G, and 5, A. I will repeat each octave twice. First time when going with right hand up to C sharp. And second time when going down from D to A. Same with B. Then G. And A. When you are switching octaves, remember not to have your hand stiff. Your hand should be relaxed. If you have any problems with getting correct distance between your, your first and fifth finger during these jumps, don't worry. Start with slow tempo. And at some point, it will become completely automatic. Next, let's add one more note to the left hand. This note is the perfect fifth. You can either count seven semitones, so for D it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, A. Or you can use the circle of fifths. So D is here, and when you go right you will have the fifth. So for D it will be A. By the way, if you want to really understand how the circle of fifths works, and how to easily remember it, check out this video. The pattern now will be this. First the octave, and then the fifth. And this will be repeated twice. So. Next octave is B, and the fifth is F sharp, so we have then G, and the fifth is D, and last A, and the fifth is E. Ok, it's time to add right hand. This time I will play from right to left and back. And also I will play two notes for each single note from the left hand. So, two notes when playing this octave, two notes when playing this fifth, and so on. And now all together. Ok, it's time for another new note. I will add the third this time. So for D, it will be F sharp. But instead of this F sharp, I will play this one, one octave higher. The pattern now will use the octave, then the fifth, then this third, and back to the fifth. I will play the whole pattern twice. Then we have octave on B, the fifth is F sharp, and the third is D. Next we have octave on G, the fifth is D, and the third is B. And the last octave A. So the fifth is E, and the third is C sharp.
For the right hand, just try to use different combination of these five notes. Try playing two at a time, or skip some notes when going up, or down. You can create a lot of nice melodies from this. And now the last exercise. This time I will use arpeggio. To build an arpeggio I will use notes that build a chord. You can build a chord on every step of the major scale. So on the first, fourth and fifth step you have a major chord. On second, third and sixth minor chord. And on seventh step diminished chord. The progression I used is 1, 6, 4, 5. Which means I will have D major, B minor, G major and A major. If you want to learn more about chords and how to build them, check out this video. Let's start building arpeggio with the first one, D major. D major has notes D, F sharp and A, and I will use only these three notes. So I have D, F sharp, A here, same in the next octave, D, F sharp, A, and I will take D from the next octave also. In the pattern I'm going to use all these notes except for the second one here. I will play all these notes with left hand. So D, A, D at the beginning, then F sharp with third finger, then A, D and back to A and F sharp. So the arpeggio for D major will be this. Next I will apply the same rules to the rest of the chords. B minor has notes B, D, F sharp. So I have one set of notes here, another here, and I'm taking the next B. And like before, I won't play this second note here. So we have this. So we have B, F sharp, B, then fourth finger to D, F sharp, B, and back to F sharp and D. Next G major with notes G, B, D. So they are here, also here, and the next G. All notes without this second note. So G, D, G, fourth finger to B, D, G and back to D and B. And last chord A major, A, C sharp, E. A, C sharp, E, A, C sharp, E and the next A without this second note. So A, E, A, third finger to C sharp, E, A and back to E and C sharp. All together sounds like this. For the right hand you can either start with going from one side to another or try to experiment. And now I will talk about the pattern I played at the beginning of this video. In fact, if you combine previous exercises, you will end up with exactly the same pattern. So the chord progression is the same, and I start with playing octave, with fifth, and then third, back to fifth, and then I play the arpeggio. So here we just need to combine left hand from the last two exercises. What about the right hand? I mostly use the same notes as in the exercises. So F sharp D, F sharp A, and then I go up from F sharp to D and back to A. Next two measures are the same. Then F sharp and B, G, another sequence but this time from G to D and back to A, C sharp A and then D, C sharp A, G and finish in D major. So as you can see there are many ways to make improvisation better. I hope it was helpful. 
Thank you and see you next time.